was once in days of yore, and in ages and times long gone before, far away on the other side of the world in a place called Asia, a poor boy named Aladdin. One day, there came into the street where Aladdin played a tall, dark old man who pretended to be Aladdin's uncle, but who, in truth, was a wicked magician from Africa. This was decreed by destiny. So it came to pass that Aladdin followed the magician until they had left the city. Thence they struck into open country and crossing it descended into a wilderness. And lo, in the midst of it stood a turquoise pool. There the magician brought out a hollow wand and tablets of red carnelian which he laid on the rod. After this he took a silver dish and setting charcoal thereon, blew one breath into it, causing a great flame to spring forth. Into this flame the magician sprinkled all manner of strange colored powders, blue, green, red, and yellow, and mumbled as though to himself wild and terrifying words. His terranum was all over of Florco. In an instant the earth beneath their feet trembled. They heard a rumbling like a distant thunder which grew nearer. And the very ground split open in front of them, revealing a deep, deep pit beneath their feet. Look below you, said the old man, and you will see steps leading downward. You will descend them until you come to the first of three great halls. You will pass through these halls, being careful to touch nothing, for to touch anything down there is to die. And the magician passed to Aladdin a wondrous ring of many great powers to protect him. And Aladdin slipped it on his finger. Then the magician said, When you have passed through the three halls, you will come to a garden. At the far end of the garden you will see a lamp. Put out its light, pour out its oils, then return and bring the lamp to me. Aladdin did as the magician asked. Then... Unable to resist, he plucked from the trees of the garden fruits made of diamonds and rubies, of emeralds and sapphires, fruit of every color shining with the lights of the most precious jewels in the world. When he ascended the steps again, the old magician, leaning down to the pit, demanded that Aladdin hand the lamp up to him. Aladdin refused. Hand it to me at once, screamed the old man. Not until I am safely out, repeated Aladdin. Then the magician stamped with rage and rushing to the fire threw upon it more magic powder of awful strength and instantly the pit closed over Aladdin's head leaving him in darkness. For two days and two nights Aladdin lay in the darkness wailing and moaning until in his anguish over ever seeing the light of day again he accidentally rubbed the lamp which rested in his hand. At once there came forth from the lamp a smoke which spied heavenwards into ether. The smoke trailed along the earth's surface until having reached its full height, the thick vapor condensed, formed itself and became a genie. Oh, what a terrifying creature this genie was! His head was a dome, his hands like pitchforks, his legs as long as masts, and his mouth as big as a cave. His teeth were like large stones, his eyes two lamps, and his look fierce and lowering. What is your will, master? The genie said. I am the slave of the lamp, and must do the bidding of him who holds the lamp. Whoever, whatever you are, cried Aladdin, Take me out of this dreadful place. In the very next moment, the earth split open and Aladdin found himself in the palace of the Sultan. He fared forward into the palace and did not stop until he came through a second door with a curtain drawn before it. He raised the curtain and behold, he saw a couch of whitest ivory and on the couch was a princess of Aladdin's dreams. Oh, he gazed as she lay in her beauty, then, shuddering with 
pleasure, kissed her softly on her right cheek and returned to his mother's house. Mother, he cried when he reached home, I have seen the princess and have made up my mind to marry her. Go at once to the sultan with these fruits of precious stone and beg him to give me his daughter's hand. And Aladdin gave his mother no peace until she did as he wished. For 16 days, Aladdin's mother went to the Sultan's palace until the Sultan noticed her. Who is that poor woman who comes every day carrying a white bundle? The Sultan commanded to know at last. Then the Grand Vizier ordered that she be brought forward. And she came, bowing herself into the ground. The Sultan then spoke kindly to her, and she took courage and told him of Aladdin's love for the princess and of his bold request. He sends you this gift, she continued, and she presented up the magic fruits. Seeing this treasure put before him, the Sultan cried, He who marries my daughter must first send me forty gold basins filled to the brim with precious stones, and these basins must be carried by forty slaves. Whereupon, Aladdin's mother returned home in great distress. But Aladdin bade his mother dry her tears, and taking up his magic lamp, rubbed it and lo, from out of the ground rose the giant genie of smoke, and Aladdin told him to send at once the forty slaves carrying forty basins of jewels to the Sultan. <laughs> When the Sultan saw this awesome sight of gleaming riches put before him, he called for Aladdin. Aladdin came to the palace wearing a gleaming suit of gold, and as he walked through the streets of the city, he strewed 10,000 gold pieces upon the street for the people who sang of him and cheered to him. He stood at the foot of the Sultan's throne, and the Sultan said, This very day you shall wed my daughter. Not so, your majesty, replied Aladdin. I will not marry the princess until I have built a palace fit for the daughter of a sultan. Then he returned home once more and called the genie of the lamp. Build me the fairest palace ever beheld by mortal eyes, Aladdin said. And lo, in the morning when Aladdin looked out, there stood the palace shimmering brilliantly in the sun. That day, Aladdin married the princess, and for one year they lived in happiness. Then it came to pass that one day, while Aladdin was far from the palace and the princess sat high upon a balcony, that through the street below came an old man crying, New lamps for old! New lamps for old! The princess summoned the old man into the palace and hoping to please Aladdin, gave the old man Aladdin's lamp, which she did not know to be a magic lamp, and held out her lovely hand for a new shining one. The old man, taking the magic lamp from her, rubbed it, and in a flash the genie appeared, causing the princess to swoon away upon the floor. The old man was the same magician of Africa who had first cast Aladdin deep into the ground of the wilderness. The magician who had given Aladdin the magic ring, which he still wore, but whose magic power Aladdin did not know. What is your will, master? The genie said, and the magician bade him carry the palace to Africa. In an instant, the great building and all who were in it were lifted high across the seas to Africa, where the princess languished in sadness for a year. Alas, when Aladdin returned that day to the palace and found it gone, he was stricken with grief. In the place where the palace had stood were the sultan's soldiers who put him in irons and cast him deep into a dungeon. So sad was the sultan over the loss of his wondrous daughter. For three hundred days, Aladdin sat in the dungeon with all hope gone from him. Then, one day as he clasped his hands before his head in the darkness, he rubbed the magic ring on his finger, which the old magician had given him before sending him into the pit long years before. In an instant before his eyes, the genie of the magic ring appeared. He was a water genie. The water glowed and lighted the dungeon walls and then began to rise and form itself. The genie stood squat, wet and ugly at Aladdin's feet and said, 
I am the genie of the ring. What is your will, master? Bring me back my palace and my princess, cried Aladdin. Alas, master, said the genie of the ring, that is beyond my strength, for the palace was banished by the greater powers of the genie of the lamp. What can I do, cried Aladdin? How can I find my beloved princess and right the wrong that has been done? I can take you out of this dungeon across the sea and into the palace where it stands this night, answered the genie. Take me to the place, exclaimed Aladdin, and... In the next instant he was flying across great mountains and beyond the sea to Africa, where he was sat down by the genie of the ring at the side of the princess. Her melting beauty was still with her. Her eyes shone with love and joy at the sight of Aladdin. Instantly, Aladdin inquired of the magic lamp, and the princess answered that the old magician always kept it by his side, concealed under his cloak. Then Aladdin instructed the princess as to what she must do if they were ever to return with the palace and regain the favor of the Sultan. He bade her make a great feast to which she must invite the magician, and he whispered into her ears the words she must speak. That night, in the great hall of the palace, while the music played softly and the yellow moon hung low over the walls, the old magician entered in great surprise, for the princess had never deigned to speak to him once through the long year. And as he sat down to partake of the heaping foods upon the table, the princess said to him, I have been too long alone, and know in my heart that I will never see Aladdin or my father again. Therefore, I wish to enter your heart as a friend and remain there. Let us drink this toast in hope of it. Whereupon the princess, as Aladdin had told her, dropped a poison potion into her cup and filled the magician's cup with pure wine. The magician wanted the princess's friendship, for she was the most beauteous in all the world. But he was a suspicious old man and could not understand why she should change her mind so suddenly. Therefore he said, I will drink that toast to the hope of our friendship. But to make my drink sweeter, I will drink from your glass and you from mine. Gladly, answered the princess, and gave over to the magician the cup she was holding which contained the poison. Whereupon the magician drank it down and fell dead at her feet. At once Aladdin sprang out from behind the curtain where he had been hiding, and stooping over the magician, took out the magic lamp and rubbed it. An instant after the genie appeared, Aladdin made his commands, and the palace and all who were in it were transported out of Africa, across the seas to their home, where they lived in great happiness, ruling wisely and well all the years of their lives. <laughs> Thank you.